All right, so this is just gonna be another little how-to video. We have done this one before. Basically, I'm gonna assemble a SoCal style I-beam front end. I mean, there's a few different brands. You've got SoCal, uh, Roadster Supply, you know, Speedway sell kits and Pete and Jake sell kits and uh, Australian Rod and Custom over East sell kits. They're all fairly similar, but I'll try and give you a bit of a guide as to how we've assembled them. It's probably not the only way, but this is the way we found that it works really well. So you can see the chassis behind me. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's dive into it and do a little bit of a how-to. Okay, the first thing we'll put together is the, uh, the back wing um, and the hairpin itself. So obviously you can see the hairpin, you can see that there's one long leg, one shorter leg, so obviously that's the short leg here. So we're gonna put the back wing, back wings together with the, uh, the hairpin. Um, and I mean, this is, we've already had this all mocked up. So obviously this already has all the brackets welded on and all that sort of stuff. Um, but if you were doing it and you were just doing initial setup, normally with the adjusters here, you can see the, the adjuster. Um, we normally sort of wind them in about halfway. That way, once you've put it all together and everything, if you do have to make adjustments on your adjusters, which is obviously the point of them, at least you're halfway, you know, you've got a little bit of movement in and out. So let's, uh, let's put those bits together first. Now, one thing to note with the bat wings is when you look at them, you can see here where the perch bolt goes through, it's obviously got a bit of a twist. So obviously, now if you look at your axle, it'll curve this way and then the other side will curve the other way. So you want to have, your hairpins want to be basically vertical straight up and down and obviously put the twist. So you just make sure you get them around the right way. Uh, so you, you're going into the right part. Another thing I just thought to mention as well, just as I reach over, obviously these bolts are all stainless and so make sure when you do put them all together, put a bit of anti-seize on them. Uh, obviously these I've got them on because we've had it assembled. Even if you're just gonna twitch it up, even just to mock up, a bit of anti-seize is always a good idea. All right, next thing we are going to do is uh, we'll slip the axle into the bat wings. Let's get that going. All right, the next part we're going to do, we're gonna get our spring. As you can see here, I've already fitted what they call the perch bolt and one shackle. So on this side, which will be the driver's side, we get the perch and the shackle, that'll drop in there. On the opposite side, I'll swing it around just so you can see. This is what they call a dead perch. So this goes directly onto the spring. Obviously, we'll put the bushes in here. And the idea of that 
is it's fixed, so it'll stop the side-to-side -side movement on the axle. That can also be done with a panhard bar, which will work the same. Um, but yeah, it's a personal choice thing. I've driven both. I, I really can't feel the difference between the two. So it is really just a personal choice thing. Some people prefer the panhard. Other people are quite happy just to run the dead perch as we are here. So that just drops through there like that. Got the nut. Once I get it started, once again, make sure you've got plenty of anti-seize on there. Now you'll see that these ones are adjustable. So I can undo that and that can swing to adjust the angle. Uh, some are adjustable, some aren't. So it just depends on brand. The SoCal ones are adjustable. You can get them fixed, um, but it's up to you once again, personal choice. Let's just tighten these up. Right, so once you've got this tightened up, obviously now, what we'll try and do, see if we can drop these into there. So drop your perch bolt in that one, and dead perch on that one. Their general consensus is that the dead perch will go on the passenger side. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna balance that there for a minute, because I just wanna, as you can see, that's loose. So I'm just gonna nip them up a little bit so that um, I can actually pull them down. So I'll do that. Right, so now there, that's nipped up just to stop that. So then, basically, I'm going to drop these through. I probably need a bit of a tap just to get them started. That one's through. So once they're through, then the next thing is we've got to put on the uh, lower shock mount. So these uh, these particular bat wings are a two-piece design where the lower shock mount bolts on separately. Um, where SoCal uh, do a one-piece design as well. So it just depends on the brand and that sort of thing. And there's a the two-piece ones. Hopefully you can see that there's a little groove to obviously line them up. They go on there. Put the nut on the bottom. I'm just doing finger tight for now. And then that's how the shock will go. That'll go on there like that. And obviously the shock will come up here. Alright. Okay, so at this stage now, I would say we're probably ready to now sort of swing it up into the chassis so i'll get that all prepped up and then we'll uh, we'll come back all right the next thing we want to do is i want to lift up the hairpins and sort of drop them in the back so we'll get all that set up first and then uh we'll put a trolley jack under the front so let's get the hairpins in the back first hopefully that goes okay All right, you can see here now I have uh, basically a trolley jack under the axle. And now theoretically, we should be able to do just basically jack it up. You can see the U-bolts just sort of sitting there, but I'll drag the, the spring up into the cross member and get the locating pin lined up.
now we'll just put um, the uh, the lower part of the U-bolt kit on. Of course, I'm going to have to put some anti-seize on. Let me do that. Oh, there we go. Okay, next part will be uh, the spindle. So here's our um, spindle. And as you can see, you've obviously got to have it so that it comes out at the right angle. So when you put that on, you know, make sure you're, you've got that the right way. So that's where the, sp the spindle itself goes. This bearing goes on under, underneath at the bottom here. Wheel should be reasonably tight to get in. Try and get it quite close and lined up. Then next is your kingpin. So you can see here, you've got the kingpin. So then you've got this little cup washer first. Then you've usually got these felt gaskets. And you can see this ridge. Now that needs to line up in here. Um, that'll be the, for the the stopper so we'll tap this in hopefully it lines up Beautiful, we've got it to line up. So the next thing that'll go in will be the kingpin stopper, hang on. So this is the kingpin stopper. So that goes in from the front and it's tapered. So as we push that in from the front, then on the back, we'll then do the thread. And as we tighten that up, that should pull through and tighten everything up. So there we go, you can see that now there, and we'll swing around that side, and there's your stopper. Once this is all together and we've maybe tested, sometimes you do have to grind a little bit off here just to get full lock, um, but it does depend on brand and everything like that, but we'll work that out once we try it. So um, next, I'll do the other side, then we'll do steering arms. All right, I'm just gonna show you the uh, steering arms. Um, mainly because obviously between left-hand drive and right-hand drive, there are differences. So this, on a right-hand drive car, you'll only have the one hole on the driver's side, and then on the passenger car side, you'll have two holes. Obviously the tie rod bar goes uh, between these two. So that joins the two together as they steer. And then the second hole would then go back to the steering box, or in this case, we've got like a half rack, which I'll put on later. And on an American car, obviously there'll be or a left-hand drive car, they'll be the opposite way around. Uh, so let's have a look at, uh, this is the SoCal or Roaster Supply type brake setup. So there is varying styles, but this is the style we generally use. All right, let's fit the, uh, so this is the bracket that'll also, as well as holding the uh, steering arms, like that, that'll bolt into the steering arms or bolt into the lower holes. This will also be the brake caliper bracket. So we'll line that up with the top holes.
Now these are a blind hole type steering arm, so the holes are hidden. Some brand, obviously you will have the bolt where you'll see it. Um, it's just a brand thing once again. So basically, that'll go under there, through there. These ones also get a nut on the back as well, just to be safe. Tighten them up in a sec. But there you can now see the steering arm. On, and then we'll put the other side on and we'll put the tie rod bar on. All right, we'll, uh, we'll fit the tie rod bar should be a pretty straightforward process. What's the easiest way to do this? Under here. the usual and obviously when I'm a bit further around and once we've tightened everything up and checked the alignment um, then we'll go through and they will get pulled up a bit tighter and split pins put in uh, but until we get it on the ground with all the weight, it's uh, we won't do the alignment just yet. All right, let's fit the shock absorbers. Usual deal, just to be safe. Pretty sure it's already got some on it. these ones they're very nice finish with getting started that all right the next bit is pretty straightforward really um, I'm going to slide the rotors on so obviously bearings seal all that sort of stuff uh, there's probably no point in you watching me getting covered in grease so I'll get the bearings all packed and in and I'll slide it on then we'll come back I had a customer come in and distract me so and I forgot to film putting the brake calipers on but I'm sure that's not rocket surgery off Obviously the one thing to make sure is that your bleeder is on the top with these particular style rotors. You can get them round the wrong way. Ask me how we know that that can be done. Just a very quick one if you're wondering what this is. So we've used these on a few cars. Uh, so it's a company called Unisteam make these. It's a cross steer rack. So it's more or less like half a rack and pinion. Um, ideal for you know for your BMAX, obviously that goes out there. 
when it's turning, this moves in and out, so this hangs below the chassis. I'll show you it all mounted. But these drive nice, like the road feels much better than a box. Um, realistically, by the time you buy this, it comes with the, the drag link. It's not a, a huge amount more compared to, say, buying a Chevy Vega box or whatever, and you can get them in right-hand drive or left-hand drive. Uh, so just another option, and in, say, like in a car like this, like a Model A chassis, because it drops it down low, it does make it a bit easier when fitting the motor in, especially with a small block Chev, because you've got your fuel pump block and all that sort of stuff can get pretty tricky. So, yep, let's get it mounted and see what you think. All right, let's get this uni steer in. Put one in. You can see that's what it looks like fitted. I'll know I'll put the drag link on and I'll tighten everything up. And I guess you would call this now finished product. Obviously, once we sit it on the ground, put wheels on it, uh, all that sort of stuff, we've still got to do toe in, toe out adjustments and double check that the axle is, the axle needs to lean back a little bit, uh, seven degrees. We checked it before quickly and it looked like it was pretty well right, but once we've got it on the ground and got all the weight in it, everything like that, we will double check. But hopefully that'll help someone out after they've bought a brand new I-beam kit and they start scratching their heads going, how does this go together? All right, let's do a real quick recap on putting it together. So I put the hairpins into the back wings, slide them onto the axle, Put your shackle onto your spring and your perch bolt and on the other side is the dead perch drop them through then you put on your lower shack uh, mounts then basically pull all that up to the u-bolt and down at the back then once you've got those then you can do your steering arm your, your king pins spindles steering arms all that sort of stuff hope that helps someone out if you've got questions just ask. Hope you enjoyed the video.